Oh, I don't know. People are all the same these days. No one wants to lift a finger to help anybody else. Not, Not like, like the, the old, old days. days. Yeah, we know, Mum. You could leave your front door open. Yes, you could. These days you didn't open it for some maniac charging in and butchering the lot of you. At least we can say we cared for each other then. Louise Ada Bill was the first matriarch of the square and right at the centre of the Bill family. She was the cornerstone that held 45 Albert Square together. Having grown up in London and moved into 45 Albert Square when she married the love of her life, Albert Bill, when she was just 22, they spent a few happy years together being the centre of the community and running a successful fruit and veg stall together until his death during World War II. Open it for me. Read it to me. Yeah, I could learn. Please. After Albert's death, Lou had to take on a hardened exterior for her family as she became the head of the house, running the fruit and veg store on her own and keeping her family happy at home all at the same time. Her and Albert had seven children together. Maggie, who she had out of wedlock and was adopted. Dora, Harry, Ronnie and Kenny, but the ones who stayed with her until the end were the twins, Peter and Pauline. Yeah, it's mine and Pete's birthday. The terrible twins have come of age. During Lou's later years, she took pride and place in her favourite chair in the living room of number 45, the chair that gave her a sense of power like a throne. She ruled over the house and the family with an iron fist, if outsiders were to be believed, but as you got to know Lou, you knew that she had a heart of gold and cared for her grandchildren, and even Arthur Fowler, although she'd hate to admit that. Stop picking your nose, your mum would say. <laughs> One day you're coming from the garden, you said... Mum, I've been good today. I bit my nose, but I put it all back. Ian, you're probably the most precious thing your mum and dad will ever have. She carried many secrets with her for many years, from catching her son Kenny in bed with Pete's wife Pat and sending him off to New Zealand, to her secret first child she gave away when she was younger. These secrets were always held between her and her good friend Ethel Skinner, who she had grown up with on the square. Lou always had time for family and family always had to come first, even if they weren't always in the right. Said Churchill, and then just tip the table up with all our dinners on it, just like that. What over politics? No, over the walls, love. Is <laughs> <laughs> the image of his granddad, you know? She was a woman who everyone listened to. If she calls your name for a meeting, you better be there on time. Even the likes of Dirty Den wouldn't dare interrupt Lou Bill when she was mid-flow. She would arrange family meetings to suit her and nobody else. Every year on the anniversary of Albert's death, the whole family would have to go to his grave, all on Lou Bill's terms and no one else's. And no, definitely wasn't an answer you could give. Even in her later years, she never gave up trying to sort out her family's problems. She arranged one last family meeting where she gathered all the Bills and the Fowlers round to her house. She made Pauline sit in her chair and gave them all one last telling off and straightening out before she knew her work was done. And a lot of her predictions about the family actually came true. She told Ian how he would become obsessed with money and forget that his family should come first. You've got no direction in your life. You start all this city and guilds business for your catering and then you chuck it all out the window. There it went. Your parents gave up a hell of a lot so you could do that course. And how do you repay them? You start up a disco business. More money, is that it? Well, money ain't all that important. You'll find that out one day. She warned Michelle that she would become a lonely spinster if she wasn't more careful with the men in her life. Miss Independence? Oh no, Michelle Fowler can't be like her mother and her mother before her. No, that's not good enough for her. She wants her independence. Well, let me tell you, miss, that you mistake independence for self-centeredness. You've grown up too quickly and you've grown too selfish. You're all take and me and I. You don't give. If you're not careful, you want to watch it, because you're going to end up 
a very lonely old spinster. And she told Pauline how she carried the weight of the world all on her shoulders and occasionally she needs to live her own life. You've got the lot, haven't you? I'm surprised your shoulders haven't buckled with the weight resting on them. They broke the mould when they made you. The last of the line where we all come from. I don't know how you do it. Working, looking after this lot, looking after me. And yet I've never heard you complain. Lou's last words to her family were, Right, that's you lot sorted, I can go now. And there couldn't have been a more fitting end to such an iconic character. She went out on her terms and her terms only. She may have only been on our screens for a short three years, but her legacy still lives on today, with her great-grandchildren Bex Fowler and Peter Bill, and even Louise Mitchell and Louis Branning being named after her. So, let's all raise a glass to Lou Bill, who's still out there, dancing away at her favourite holiday spot, Leon C. Right. That's you lot sorted out. I can go now. <laughs>